and here we are, roaming through fields of cotton and sidling up to the old cabin door where we gather the aroma of candied yams and sizzling hams. Ha ha! Hoe cake and corn pone. Yowza! For this chapter of Comedy Caper 6 is way down south, and we dedicate this program to that glorious section of our country that lies below the Mason-Dixon line. Dixie. Good old Dixie. Famous in lullaby and legend. Birthplace of heroes and mammy songs. And since I've heard of all the wonderful distilleries down there, boy, I wish I was in Dixie. Well, here we go, and we're just nine little miles from Tennessee. Gonna hop a choo-choo right away to the place so dear to me. Five, six, seven, eight, nine little miles from ten, ten, Tennessee. Got a lot of hugs and kisses, say, for the one who cradled me. Five, six, seven, eight, nine little miles from ten, ten, Tennessee. Tomorrow morn, at stroke of seven, I'll be reborn, stepping into heaven. There's a girl who's waiting for the church, but she can't go without me. Five, six, seven, eight, nine little miles from ten, ten, Tennessee. Thank you. Thank you, boys. Yes, sir, that's the voice of the Southland, and it's calling me home. Speaking of home brings back the memory of old Mammy's cooking. And speaking of cooking, we have a Mammy right here in the studio with us. Yes, sir, Mammy Eleanor Haberwood, who says she can do things with a skillet like nobody's business. And right now, she's going to spring some brand new ideas on us relative to the concocting, mixing, and manufacture of a certain kind of pudding. Here she is, Eleanor Haberwood. No, no, Mary, don't take it away. Half of the pleasure of pudding is looking at it, don't you think so, dear? Oh, you horrid thing, you won't say so when you taste my pudding. Yes, I made it all myself. Mary never touched it. I knew you'd say that. I even sent her out of the room while I was making it. Mary, Mr. Clyde will serve the soup tonight. I burned my hands both pretty badly, dear. Well, it was better to burn them than the pudding, wasn't it? Well, it has to be one or the other. I can't explain why. Mary, it's very hot in here. You'll have to take the pudding downstairs or open one of the windows a little, just a little. It is warm, dear, it is. But if you'd have been in the kitchen all day making a pudding, you'd feel warm, too. All right, Mary, you'll have to take the pudding downstairs and put it in the icebox. The recipe said it should be kept in a cool place, and I wouldn't risk it in this hot room a fraction of a second longer. Oh, no, dear, no. Of course I don't want the window open if you're going to take cold, you know. The last time you had your attack of bronchitis, you never stirred out of this house for five long mortal days. Oh, I didn't mean that, dear. Harry, dear, how you do take me up. I was only thinking of how you suffered. I love to have you home daytime. Mary, what are you standing there with the pudding for? I told you to take it downstairs. I'm not cross, dear. I'm only nervous. Can't you tell the difference? Oh! Oh, did you hear that crash? Mary, did you drop the pudding? Oh, only the baby falling out of his crib. I thought it was the pudding. Uh, Mary, tell him he must lie quiet until the pudding's over. And Mary, I think you'd better bring it back upstairs. I'm afraid it'll get chilled. Yes, I know it, dear. She'll bring the rest of the dinner just as soon as she gets the pudding back upstairs. It's only because I want you to have your pudding right, dear. I try in every way to make you happy and be a good wife to you. Well, I know you don't mean anything by it, dear. It's just your way. Mary, let me look at it. It looks as though it were going down. <laughs> Harry, don't make those silly jokes. Well, it doesn't cheer me up a bit. No, dear, it's not black. It's, it's just a dark brown. The cookbook said cook until a rich brown. It's a little richer than I thought, so. <laughs> no, dear, it's not tough. It's not tough at all, Mary. Bring me a soft knife from the kitchen. <laughs> Just, uh, I hate a loose pudding, though, don't you, dear? <laughs> now, Mary, uh, uh, just uh, uh, taste it, dear. How perfectly disgusting. Don't poke it about like that. <laughs> it, they're not rubber things at all. They're cut-up banana. They're, why, Harry, they're not flies. They're raisins. <laughs> now, taste it, dear. Taste it. Go on. Don't hold your breath. Just taste it. You don't, you don't like it. No, you don't. Well, if you could just see your face, you'd know whether you liked it or not. Oh, dear. Oh, I was so hard over that morning. Oh, dear. I wish I were dead. I wish you were dead. I wish you were dead. I 
wish we all were dead. <laughs> no, I don't. I just live to punish you. I'll make you eat every bit of this pudding. And then you'll wish you were dead. <laughs> Well, mix a lot, and what have you got? Dyspepsia. Well, the proof of the pudding is in the eating, but you can't prove anything by me, except that we're right back where we started. That is in Dixie, and just to keep us in that southern atmosphere, we're going to have handed out to us a mess of hot harmony. Signed, sealed, and delivered by the Varsity Three, and to get into the way down there vernacular, you ain't heard nothing till you hear the boys do St. Louis Blue. <laughs> clouds, and when I say threatening, I mean threatening, for these two yeggs are a threat in any man's country. I give you, yes, sir, I give you, you can have them, I don't want them, those two hysterical Hibernians, Clark and Cleary, uh, the two-man stock company from the stocker yards, uh, Clark and Cleary. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, the old Kentucky Colonel, if you don't mind, I'd like to sing a song of the South for you, entitled, You Can Have the Sunshine of Virginia, But Give Me the Moonshine of My Old Kentucky Home. I'll sing one song of my old Kentucky home. It's evening, the dark is gay. Well, 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 here come my daughter Nella. Oh, well, well. Hello, you are. <laughs> well, 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 daughter. You're late again as usual. And it's screamed, Daddy. I never seem to get anywhere on time, can I, honey? Uh, where you been, honey? And what you all been doing? Oh, honey, I got mixed up in a crap game, you know. <laughs> Boy, honey, I was red hot. You know, I made seven straight passes. I'm a next rollout. I was going for six, and it refused me. Uh, how many times yeah. must I tell you that I don't like for you to carry on that way? Now, don't be cross, Daddy. Don't be cross. Daddy. Well, who is you with, daughter? Who I is you with? I was with a streetcar conductor. A streetcar conductor? <laughs> well, what was his name, daughter? His name is Rob Nichols, oh. Honey, you'd love me. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you be a good girl, sugar? Why don't you be a good girl? Honey, you can't have any fun being good. <laughs> who do you think I met, honey? I don't know, precious. Who was it? I met Primo Canera. The prize fighter? Yes, Daddy. Boy, is he a mess of what? Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I can't, I can't go to his next fight, though. Well, why not, honey? Well, uh, he, he's going to fight without any clothes on. Oh, I bet. 
my baby. He can't do that. Well, he, he said he was going to fight a man named Max Bear or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Why, that's the name of the other fighter, Lammy. Show no. Show no. That's a heck of a name, ain't it? Honey, he's a handsome guy, though, you know. Well, remember, daughter, beauty is only skin deep. Well, that's deep enough for me. I'm no cannibal, you know. <laughs> You seem to have a cold, sugar. Well, honey, no wonder. Yes. Well, how's that, daughter? Oh, I was taking a bath in that darned old radio. Started playing the Star Spangled Banner. Well, Dad is glad to see his little daughter is patriotic anyway. Well, honey, when I got back down in the tub, do you know what they played? No, sugar. What did they play? Muddy Warriors. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, I bet they got that television and they're holding out on it. Well, good. tell me more about this boyfriend of yours. What kind of chap is he? Oh, uh, he, honey, he, he ought to be on the radio. You know, he can sing with his eyes closed and mm. everything. He's twelve. Oh, he's a singer. Is he? What kind of songs does he sing? Well, he sang the cutest song about a house on a stove. A house honey. on a stove. Oh, you mean home on the range? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he sang. He sang another one. He sang another one about a plumber. About a plumber? Yeah, singing in the drain, mm. honey. He was a kid. <laughs> Tell me the truth now. Don't lie to your daddy. Did, you, did he make love to you? Well, honey, he said he'd kiss me or die in the tent. Well, did he kiss you? <laughs> he was alive this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Well, after that, you can carry me back to old Virginia. Well, it's getting sleepy time down south, which means it's time for us to fold up till the next time. So we'll have a bit of the old theme song from the lads. Come, boys. <laughs> Well, friends, much as I hate to, I have to say farewell for the time being. This is Tom Post bidding you that fond adieu, and remember that there's no need for worry if your pet hen is gone. That's why darkies were born. <laughs> Thank you.